Good morning, everybody. It's the last week of term. We're nearly at Easter, so I'm going to lead us this morning um, with a few thoughts about the Easter story. I've got some videos to show you, uh, and we're going to spend some time in prayer. Here's our prayer for lighting the candle. Let's pray. It's nearly Holy Week. Let's stop for a moment, longer than usual, to think and reflect on the mysterious acts, words and life of Jesus. Let his Last Supper, his death and his resurrection compel us to consider who he is and what this all means. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This incredible picture you're looking at now is from the High Altar at Westminster Abbey and it's an artist's interpretation of the Last Supper. In the picture you can see Jesus with his disciples. You can also see his betrayer Judas sitting uh, in front of the table with a bag of money. We're going to look at this scene in a bit more detail now by watching uh, one of three videos that we're going to watch today. All of these videos are from a channel called True Tube, and on True Tube they ran a competition a few years ago for um, secondary school students to enter some poetry um, and to win um, the opportunity to do a voiceover for these videos. I think you'll enjoy them. As I walk into Jerusalem, I see the crowds, I see sin, I see people disrespecting God. I will help them be the people they should have been. I shout at them in my rage, in my passion, furiously. I will teach them what is right, and from their sins I'll set them free. You remain in me, I say, I remain in you and my joy will be in you too. My enemy, hungry for power, plans to kill me, hour by hour. Apart from me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers, and this is my body that is broken apart. Share it around, dipped in my blood to remember me, and I will always be with you in your heart. Tonight, one of you will betray me. You'll think you will see me no more, but I will be back. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Now you are here, darkness will reign. Let the world turn black. I explain myself, I am here. You bend down to kiss me. You look at me and wait for my reply. I have forgiven you, but you are the one who is captured, not free. You walk away, but soon you will know that I am the Son of God. In that short clip, we see Jesus arriving into Jerusalem on what we now call Palm Sunday, where people wave palm leaves and, and lay them down at his feet. And we see him going into the temple, being angry with the way that people are, are treating God's special house. We then see um, the Last Supper, which is a, a supper which people still celebrate every day um, today all around the world. Um, people take bread and wine in Holy Communion as we remember the story of Easter every single day. That's how significant that meal is. Let's take a moment now to reflect quietly on what we've seen and heard in a moment of silent prayer.
This next video we're going to watch is not easy to look at. Uh, we're going to see scenes that build up to Jesus's crucifixion. Dragged to your accusers, to the scribes and Pharisees, betrayed by one who loved you, now blinded by his greed. You have been rejected, they withdraw from your love. Those you're trying to save, deny you're from above. Your friends promised loyalty, said they'd stay by your side, but in the face of danger, they fled or they lied. Your fate must be decided, you know that Pilate is in doubt, but the people want to show, so crucify him, they shout. It is the people's choice, as both judge and jury, they don't recognise their God, consumed by hate and fury. They force you to bow at the throne of sin, but as they cloak you in their mockery, you know that God will win. Sent back to face the crowd, determined to watch you die, but you refuse defeat, your eyes focus on the sky, washing away his part, weighed down by his guilt, pure water stained with your blood, yet on his command, more is spilt. On your back you carry the heavy burden of their wrongs, but while you endure the suffering, you know it's not where you belong. The thorns of your crown pierce the skin on your head. Your tortured body is their broken bread. Now let's sit and pray. Let's be quiet for a moment and join with thousands of other students like us in church schools, taking a moment to pray today. Taken down from a cross of wood, punished and tortured for being good. Cloth of pure white placed on his face, he suffered greatly to protect our race. Carried to a cold and empty crypt, his corpse ripped and stripped and whipped. On brutal stones his body shall rest, the holy Messiah who had been blessed. Heavy stone rolled in tight, sealed in darkness, away from the light. Women come to pay their respects, only to find his tomb has been wrecked. Their saviour king is born again, with raw new scars to show his pain. The women rush to tell the eleven that their friend is not in heaven. Worried and afraid, they leap to their feet. The Lamb of God they disbelievingly greet. He shows them the scars where he hung from the cross. They have him back now, but must prepare for more loss. He tells them wise words that they must go on, because he knows that he will soon be gone. And again, let's take a few moments to pray and to reflect on what we've just seen. In a moment, we're going to finish our time of collective worship together by saying the Lord's Prayer. But I'd just like to finish um, by saying a few words to those of you who maybe feel you don't know enough about 
the Easter story. And if it wasn't for the coronavirus, perhaps you'd be thinking about going to church this Easter to find out a little more. Uh, many of our churches won't be open this Easter, but there's still lots that you can do uh, to find out about Easter and the story of the resurrection. I like watching um, films, which is partly why I've used films for this morning's collective worship. But I'd like to recommend to you a really good film called The Case for Christ. It's a story of a journalist called Lee Strobel, whose um, wife um, became a Christian and was very passionate about her faith. And he was very angry about that. And he wanted to prove that she was making a mistake. Um, he was worried for her and worried for his children that they were being deluded. So he set about trying to prove that the resurrection didn't happen. Um, Lee Strobel worked for a, a large newspaper. He had lots of good contacts um, and he set about speaking to lawyers um, and scientists to prove that the resurrection didn't take place. Um, however, he actually ended up convincing himself that it did take place. Um, and he became a Christian and wrote a very famous book about his experience called The Case for Christ. If you happen to have a Prime video at home, you can watch it for free. If you don't, then you can buy uh, the DVD. It's well worth a watch. When I'm watching um, films, I like to eat popcorn. Here's a picture of some popcorn. Can you tell from the picture whether it is salty popcorn or sweet popcorn? No, of course you can't. The only way you could actually find out is to taste it for yourself. And the Christian faith is like that. There's only so much you can gain by watching videos, reading about it and looking at it. To really understand it, then you need to experience it for yourself. Hopefully our churches will be open again soon, but you don't need to go to church to have an experience of faith. You can have an experience of faith right now by entering into the opportunity to say a prayer. We're going to have a time of stillness now where you may sense God's spirit with you and then we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's say the Lord's Prayer out loud together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And that's all we've got time for this morning. I hope you have a great Easter holiday. I look forward to welcoming you back to school in two weeks time. Happy Easter, everyone.